Welcome to the Don Pod, the supporters podcast. Here's your hosts, Sam and Nate. The unsociable Dons rock up to the SCG and score 101 points but lose. Essendon 15 11, 101, defeated by the Sydney Swans. 19 17, 131 on a Saturday night in Sydney. Welcome back to the Don Pod. I am joined once again by the bodacious Nathan. Bodacious! I like it! Love it! I'm not to, sure what it is, but I'm in for well, it. Well, interestingly, I did have to Google that last week. I thought, you know, last week was illustrious. So I sort of set a standard here. Mm-hmm. So, bodacious. Can you do like 20 of these, you reckon? I don't think I've got more than two in me. <laughs> but I'm well, by the way. Oh, good. I'm glad. Yeah. Um, not not as much of a fun podcast this week. Although, well, there are, there are elements of positivity in it, but there's a fair bit of, maybe not a fair bit of, but there's probably a more an aspect of negativity that we're still struggling with, aren't we? Yes. Quite. And as you and I like to do before these, we try not to talk about what our views of the game so we can both just be all very fresh with each other. So I'm looking forward to hearing a lot of your views on this sort of stuff. Thank you. You too. That was eloquently Light. spoken there. Yeah, well done. I'll try. Um, some numbers for you before we crack in too far. Uh, goal scorers, Gresham and Stringer, three apiece. Wright, Merritt, Langford, two. Goldstein, Draper, Cox, one each. Uh, to go with Gresham's three, he also had sc- uh, 11 score involvements. Uh, leading possession winners, Merritt, 32. That comprised of two goals, five clearances and six tackles. Martin, 31. Setterfield, 29, which comprised of eight clearances, five of those from stoppages, as in stoppage clearances, and seven tackles. Usually I ask you for your thoughts before I crack into some other stats, but I just want mm. to sort of draw attention to one thing before we go into that. Yep. 19 goals, 17, 131. That, I believe, is 36 scoring shots to Sydney. Mm. Good math, Sam. Um, I think that sets the tone for what we're going to talk about. What were your... Yeah, I, I agree. Like We know... We, our positives are becoming clear and clear. We saw a bit of it last year, and I think we're seeing more of it again this year. The 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 where we're good, mm-hmm. but it's the where we're bad, which just doesn't seem to be improving. And and I, I I still don't know. I'm I'm not smart enough maybe to know if it's structure or player. You know, like I think we have our certain frustrations with players. You know, like the Heppels, the Hines, and you know those sort of guys annoy us with some of their. We've been watching them so long that we've got so used to them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I don't know if it's now it's just ingrained in them or it's just the way they're coached. But yeah, let's um let's try and work out. Let's try and help my brain. I'll try, oh, try and help your brain. Problem. I thought we were going to help the Essendon Football Club. Oh, stuff the Essendon Football Club. They're gone. Okay. Well, uh, some match facts, match stats. Ten plus ten disposals, which equated to. I believe that's meant to be minus 21 kicks, not 241, as I have written there, <laughs> and plus 31 handballs. So probably you could argue a bit of overpossessing, perhaps. Yep. Down three on the inside 50s, which I would actually give as a tick to us. I think Sydney 100%. and Sydney, small ground, and I think we are all in agreement. They're a very good side. So yep. cop that. Minus four hitouts. Again, I'd take that against Grundy. Um, very good Ruckman. Uh, I don't You've know got- if I would. Well, Goldstein and Draper, I thought. You've got a stat that we can sort of talk to that later on. Uh, Plus 10 clearances, which is really good against a great midfield that they have. Plus one center clearances and then plus nine around the grounds. That's a real change. Plus nine from stoppage clearance. That is a massive difference from last season. Uh, And that last season, yeah, 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 I agree. Level on the contested possession, minus 23 marks and then minus 10 of them were inside 50. That's a big concern from the Hawthorne game as well. Exactly. And minus the eight negatives. tackles, minus eight tackles, which we were in the forties uh, for tackles, I believe, which is not great. Well, yeah, it was a fairly free flowing game and a bit of a shootout. Uh, I had two hundred and thirty two total points uh, and thirty four goals, so a little bit of a. Do you think too that the other factor in all this too is the ground? Like the, it's Sydney smaller, is... but it's not that. 
But it's the way they played it. Like the like if they were kicking inside of the fifty from the center square, like the center circle, you know, like they knew that you can if you kick it well enough, you can get one. Like I just felt like I think the test will be a marble this week and see mm-hmm. if we how we play that, which is a ground I think that our players a small a bit better at so maybe we'll see some of those numbers change but if they don't then it's more concerning yeah and well another good test too against it what seems to be a good side in st kilda which we'll talk about mm-hmm. later on yeah, yeah. um i want to talk about the most topical thing to come out of the game oh, first yeah. and that is our boy peter wright's hit on yep. cunningham uh it was graded as careless severe impact and high contact by the match review officer and it is at the tribunal Tuesday night, tomorrow night as of recording basically means it's a four week plus is what the AFL yep. will be pushing for. Before I go into anything else, what did you make of it? Um, it the moment it happened, I thought, Ooh. um, and I was, I was I kind of hoping that the replay would show that he had his arms up or something, you know, or, or you know, he had that effort of trying to mark arms the ball. Because then, the chest mark, yeah. Yep, everything's fine at that point, I reckon, because he's just he's he's tracking for the ball. He's going to jump at the last moment, you know. He's but when you watch the replay, you see all that's good until that split second. Returns, pulls the shoulder in, and looks away, and you think, no, nah, he's mm. gone for a while. And of course, the concussion and all that. Um, I think straight away you can see Peter felt very uncomfortable. He wasn't, he like, wasn't okay with it, no. No, he's not that guy. And it really stands. Some players, probably not many players now, but some players used to love it. Um, but there, but some he, players wouldn't have that guilt. No, no, that's right. Whereas and you he could was, see he you could see him mouthing, it. I was going for the ball, I was going for the ball, yeah, you know, yeah, and he's getting yeah. all his jumpers ripped off. And he wasn't fighting back to anyone. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. fair enough. Look, Peter what about Wright's you? not that guy. Um, I think most would admit that it was just a split second that he's made a mistake and he'll, he'll pay for that. I have no doubt that he's going to get a suspension. Um, yeah, same thing. I thought the most interesting thing I took was that it wasn't a free kick. Um, and the umpire was in yep. perfect position for it. And that's that's the really fascinating thing about it because at yeah. that split second, when the umpire doesn't get an opportunity of a replay, it looked like just a... An act it was of just football. a clash, yeah. Yeah. I think I did the exact same thing you did. I was hoping that he had the arms out for the chest mark, the two arms yep. out in front of him, and he turned to brace a little bit and hit him in the head with yep. the shoulder. I think that would have been okay. Yep. He didn't. He, he tucked the arm no. in. He turned to protect yep. himself. I have no doubt that he yep. wasn't trying that, to injure Cunningham. If he just scooped out the arms for like a chesty mark sort yeah. of effort, yeah. he would have been fine, I reckon. They would have said, no, nah, he's going for the mark. It's somewhat unfortunate that it's going to be four, probably, because oh, it's not deserving of that. Because there was no, no malicious intent. It's just the game nope. state of the game at the moment is is that. For context, I went back and had a look at the Maynard one from the mm. prelim finals. Prelim? No, it must have been semis last year. Yep, I don't remember. Anyway, late last year. Um, totally different incident. I am aware. Um, Maynard was able to argue the whole footballing act thing. I don't think this was a footballing act. However, it was graded as careless initially as well. And that's and all I deal. could find. Yep. So yep. I'm, I'm assuming his was also severe impact and high contact. Well, apparently there was one with Lynch too last year where he cleaned up a Bulldogs player in a very similar way. Yes. He, the guy wasn't mentioned. concussed, I don't think. Um, but he was severely hurt. I don't know if he went off with a, you know such a concussion. But... That was about the only ones I was talking about. But the fact of the matter is the AFL is out at the moment for yep. like the players that are getting like Redmond's week we saw the you know, the week before. Um there's been a few already this, you know, popped up in, from the last round that, that well geez, they don't look like much, but they're getting a week. Yeah. I it just sucks because he's not that guy. He it wouldn't have been intentional and he's gonna cop four plus. It it kinda yep. sucks. And it sucks I mean, and it sucks for us too, because Yes, it does. What it, worked for us was the fact that I thought the two Ruckman and him worked really well for us. Yeah. Uh I was a bit disappointed to see Heaney got off for a whack in the face. He pretty much <laughs> punched someone in the chin and oh, got yeah. off. Cause, and I yes. said it at the time, Brownlow fancy he will get off and he did. Yep. And, and I do, I know it's not true, but there treatment. is some, there are definitely is a treatment of players compared to other players or 
when somebody gets reported, if it's in the finals, it's looked at, viewed differently, very yes. differently to round two or three. Patrick Cripps won the Brownlow when he mm. should have got two weeks for yep. knocking out someone. I can't remember the exact yep. circumstances, but he should have been suspended and wasn't. I reckon he Look, collected him from behind too in that one, anyway. All being said, mm. Peter Wright will get suspended. I have no issues if that's the case. I think if we can yep. argue that it was a footballing act or he was protecting himself, maybe it's not for... But if we could get it down to two, that'd be great. Yeah, um, but it's realistically going to be four, maybe five. If it's more than that, I think it's rude. I because what's his name got six or eight? Um, uh, Webster got seven. Eight, seven. That was nasty because he so, came from the front. He lined him up. He gave away. He didn't go for the ball at all. He, he ran past the ball. Him. Yeah, and yeah. that's that's Pete's saving grace is that the ball was there. Yeah, he was still. He was until that last second. The ball was, was there to mark, the and then he just yeah. went. Nah. Yeah. Uh, I will say four has him back on Anzac Day, which is quite useful. Oh, well, that would... Yeah, um, okay. I know there will be people out that. there who think he shouldn't be suspended at all. Oh, and yeah, I, and then I it's can... really funny Essendon people, aren't they? Well, like I said, if, if they can argue that he was going for the footy and it was just unfortunate, well, yeah, but he still hit him in the head quite hard. So I don't yep. think you're getting any less than two. No, <laughs> no and, and he, st- he still turned his body and he pulled yeah. his shoulder in. Like, yeah. the... the he, and I, we all would have done the same thing. I'm not I'm not having a go at him or anything like that. It's just that it's that split second where he mm-hmm. made a different mm-hmm. choice mm-hmm. and he's going to pay for it. And yeah. that is the game we're in. Five years ago, just would have been playing on no worries. Probably. And it's very different to Redmond's because we were critical of Redmond last week in that he made a stupid decision. This yep. was not. Redmond got sucked into something. Yeah. And he got all And that's what Redmond. And who? Um, Draper. Draper was stupid there too. Or maybe. You know, in the same quarter or the next quarter, that just was a stupid fell into incident. someone's back and gave away the goal. Well, yeah. he was just yeah, but there was I. We talked about the discipline and how you take good teams should be disciplined. You can be aggressive and strong and tough, but you have to be can't give away fifties, especially yeah. not at the SCG where it feels like a fifty takes you into it's inside ten meters, more than half the ground. <laughs> uh, that yeah. is a really great segue from you actually into what Tom Tom do Papley said post match. Yep. Let's go, with Tom. Well. Wow. He, he basically said it was all a facade and if you're going to rock up and play football like that, then you need to be able to win. Initially, yeah. I thought, yeah, all right, fair enough. And then I thought about it and went, well, I would much rather rock up, play tough, hard, angry football and lose than go up there like we've done in the past yeah. and let them do what they want. And I'll throw you back to the Luke Parker, Dylan Shield incident where they were absolutely taking the piss out of us. Mm -hmm. So, no, we don't want to see the Peter Wright incident every week. That's not unsociable, tough football. It's unfortunate. No, the Sam Draper falling into the back and giving away 50. That's not great football either. That just happens. That's not a big But other than that, they were tough and hard at the footy. Yeah. I'd rather play like that and lose, Tom. Merritt's tackles were all very tough and hard. Yeah, Merritt had a great game. But... I, I I can't wait. I think we play him again at Marvel, don't we? Yes, round 23. And yes. hostile I, I is required. God, we're still playing half decent footy. Because, <laughs> you know, well, normally like that in the back of end year. of the season. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. We could get flogged. <laughs> because yeah. I hope that, I hope that the coach brings up those, what he said. We'll just watch and, that again. You know, yeah. Really yeah. just says, well, he wants to find... I want you boys hard at the footy. I want you hard at the man. I want you to show him what we can do because that would be ammunition for me if I was the coach. I'd be like, right, lock that one away and I'll bring that out when required. Yeah, absolutely. And again, I reiterate, there's a right way and a wrong way. And I think for the most part, we did it the right way. And I'm but okay. yeah, but, but it's that motivation that yeah. sometimes I reckon some players don't mind. Yeah. Uh, the other thing too, like Papley to his, in his defence, like, they won and they won easily in the end, 30 points, and he kicked... What four? Yeah, Look, I got no issues with him saying it. So He's he, allowed they an played opinion. better and they did all that. So and... we need to get better. And 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 the other part of this is that I don't disagree with him hundred percent because yeah, we lost by thirty points in the end. We needed to keep hanging on and keep being in that game. We were, yeah. and we, who knows what could have happened? But you know, we're not hard enough, long enough. Correct, but it also situational context, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They're a top two side. At, oh, at the, the moment, and we'll be aiming for top four, yeah, yeah. and we're not we're not anywhere near. So uh, it's a bit. Yeah. I'm happy for I, players to have that kind of opinion. That's great for mm, the game, yep. really. But 
Yeah, bit on, bit on, it gives spice for the next one. What are we meant to do, Tom? Go up there, lose, and play, and just well, let that's you right. Do be gentle. Want. Yeah, no. Like, terribly sorry, you're better than us. Well, here's yeah, the ball. Here you go. Yeah, no. You take it. It's a, yeah. No, it's, I, a it's, it's a it's a bit of a stupid statement, but I don't I don't have a problem with him saying it, and I know that he thinks he's probably good enough to get away with it. But hopefully, and we he, don't let him next time. Absolutely is. Mm. Oh, he's, he's one of the better small forwards in the competition. Yeah, we'd have him in a heartbeat. Um, now on to some more in depth conversation about the game itself. Mm-hmm. Um, I was watching it with a couple of mates, and it was just evident every time Sydney scored, it seemed like they were waltzing through middle of the ground from D50 to forward 50 every single time. You've dug out some stats. I went to my safe place to watch it because I felt I'd be shouting. <laughs> so. <laughs> Oh, I'd, my shed. I'd spent a day at the F1 and I was dead. So it was <laughs> quite welcome to be sitting there on the couch and not walking. <laughs> um, we'll talk about the F1 later on because it was quite interesting. Um, yeah. So you've dug up some stats. You've done your homework, which I love when you do that. I try. It saves me the effort. Um, <laughs> after two <laughs> games of football for us, so yeah. keeping in mind which is not a lot some of data. teams that have played three, we've played two, others have played yeah. two. We are the worst in the competition for intercept marks, and I'm assuming that is against Def- yeah. the opposition taking intercept marks. Yep. We are third worst for taking the intercept marks, and that is yep. only behind North Melbourne and West Coast, which is not company that you ever want to be in at present. But No, it puts us in. Well, we've, that's the mindset we've got to start to maybe think. This is mm. where we might be at. I hope not, but yep. Um, and then you've sort of gone the flip side of that. We're number one in the AFL for centre clearances. I'm assuming, yep. I'm assuming that's an average. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, obviously. Oh, well, it's average and, no, it can't be point. Can't yeah, be so, but it is average, yes. Yep. I went average, yep. Number six in stoppage clearances, which, again, yep. is a really a market improvement because we Which have we sucked. were last in last yes, year. Yes, thank you. That great mm-hmm. stat because I just said that without any numbers to back that up whatsoever. Yep. Number two, total clearances. So midfield's yeah, so in a pretty you... good shape. Yeah, so when you put those two numbers together, centre clearance and stoppage clearances, we come out second best team ranked in the AFL at getting the ball out from a ball up. That is a very, very good stat to have. Now, two rounds in, can't look into too much, but last year we were the best at centre clearances and the worst at stoppages clearances. And you and I talked about this going, what happens? What's what's the difference? (laughs) I don't understand. (laughs) But... um, if we can clear up that stoppage clearances and get that into the, you know, staying around that six, seven, eight and stay best at centre clearances, then all of a sudden we've got a clearance team, which yes. is something you build from. It's there's, there's two. I feel like watching football so far this year, which I haven't watched a lot this week um, because of the yeah. aforementioned F1, yeah, but yeah, yeah. there's a big shift on scoring from your defensive half and scoring yes. from turnover. It I don't yes. know if it's a shift so much, but it feels everything feels a bit quicker. Yep. A bit more mental. You've got I went and watched Collingwood and St Kilda on Thursday night to kill a bit of time and you've got Darcy Moore making mistakes. You've got all the like they've got a pretty solid team, I would have said Collingwood and yep. they were just being absolute spuds. So Interestingly the oldest team in the competition at the moment too, Collingwood. Really? Geelong, do so better. if it yeah, Geelong a second, but <laughs> Collingwood are the oldest. If if they do fall off the cliff, it's a they'll it's fall far. Quite a cliff, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. We we'll talk about St Kilda later on, so I'll chat a bit more mm. on that game because it was fascinating. But you had some other stats on the St Kilda game about goals where they were scored from, and I think that's important in this game too. Do you mean the Sydney? Sorry, yes, in the Sydney game. I was like, did I have stats on St Kilda? No, no, sorry, Sydney. <laughs> S's. It's an F, Sam. <laughs> You just put me on the spot and I thought, fuck, I haven't got anything. What are you talking about? Uh, yeah, so I just had a quick watch before we hit record. So, you know, mm. margin for error here a little bit. But of Sydney's goals, uh, all 19 of them, they scored seven from our defensive 50. That's yep. turnover, stoppage, whatever. If it originated in our defensive 50, it was time seven. Yep. Six from turnovers everywhere else in the ground, which... For the most so part. So six and seven is 13. 13, yeah. And so that 13 was, of their 19 goals. That was between the arcs, essentially. Yep, came from us fucking up somewhere. Yep. Uh, basically. 
Yeah, not great. Interestingly, four from centre clearances, one from a forward half stoppage, yep. one direct from a free kick, and one from a ground ball uh, just yep. outside but, the 50. So my takeaway from this is that, I, how, and I, I, reckon this, I reckon the numbers wouldn't be exactly the same in the Hawthorne game, but there's something sort of pointing in the same direction in that um, Hawthorne and Sydney in the two games, what I'm seeing is that they're scoring very easily from their defensive 50, getting the ball up the other end, which is something that's been... It's been so since the Wusher. So long. Since the Wusher like, days. That? Yep. It's, that's right. We're, we're going back to coaches to say mm-hmm. that's a big problem. Why can't someone fix that? Mm-hmm. Um, and that's why I'm saying, is it a mindset or is it a, you know, player now that they've... Because in the Sydney game, I got really frustrated and you might have seen it. Like the number of times that Sydney just got out and gone. our defensive 50s, our D6 guys were just not there, not in a good position they were in front of all the forwards, so the ball. And again, I go. To, it's a Sydney ground. It's a tiny ground. They just kick it over your head. And mm-hmm. you, if you're not on him or ne- shoulder to shoulder, not front or back, then you're in trouble. You're screwed. <clears throat> Couple and of they're the positives. We're good at centre. Bad when we don't have the ball. And just to continue on your stats from earlier, um, which I like this one. Um, sorry, not. This one, one more stat first. Number two at goals per inside 50, which I've actually got a stat there that I looked up before. Mm. If you're familiar with soccer football terminology, they have a stat okay. XG. XG. XG, expected goals. Okay. So oh, okay. the, of, the, of the chances you create, they come up with a number for how many goals yep. you would be expected to score from that situation. It's, yep. it's gotcha. usually or is just always a decimal, obviously. Yep. Mm-hmm. So we're operating at plus 18.5 points from our expected schools, which is rank one in the opposition, good. which is suggesting that we score more than we should, which is actually which is a little good bit and bad. alarming. Because mm. yes. that can turn quite quickly. Yes, that's right. A bit of luck in that. Um, mm. So I really I like that. I like expected schools. Um, mm. You did also have one there. We're number four for hitouts in the competition at the moment. Yep. However, we're fifteenth for hitouts to advantage. Yeah, which was something I thought Goldie would have improved a little bit for us. I would say that Goldie was very good in the preseason, mm-hmm. but the two games I've watched so far, again, and the one, the Sydney game on the weekend, he wasn't that guy that I saw in the preseason. So, I thought Draper was very, very good in that first quarter and a half before it looked like his tank just sort of chewed up. And that's okay. Totally no fault. And I thought that was a good um, sub, like him going off. I expected Dave... Goldstein. I won't be honest. I will be honest. I mean, I expected Oh, Goldie I think from off. a fitness perspective, I that think that was sense, the right thing. But yep. Yep. And then Davey came on and had an instant Did impact, yep. that tackle, and then we kicked a goal from it. And I thought, oh, you know, this is looking good. And then... <laughs> Everyone went, no, 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 that's enough. Let's no, all go no, home now. No, no, we play for Essendon. Um, yeah. I suppose we should talk about some individual performances. Yep. Sugar, I just whacked my mic. I hope no one heard that. Um, no, no, didn't hear a thing. Zachy Merritt, who I wasn't critical of last week, but I said it wasn't his usual sort of 31 possession game. He was a bit fumbly. Mm, and I gave him both time again, didn't I? Didn't he, I he must have heard me. I don't know. We've, the old sheet's gone, so we'll never know. Um, not like we record this or anything, right? Um, <laughs> it's as if Zach listens to the podcast and went, well, stuff you, Sam. You didn't give me votes. Um, I'll lift. I'm going to just prove you wrong. 32 yep. disposals, five clearances, six tackles, two very important goals in the last quarter. One from a free kick was a phenomenal tackle the one on the far wing where he tackled yeah i can't remember who it was on the run i think it might have been warner yes. who was running at full pelt and tried to fend him off and zach just said no thank you i am taking you down i'm zach Sorry. merritt yeah i love zach that's what that's that's zach merritt in a nutshell for me that tackle um mm. he was inspirational didn't get us over the line obviously but he was very good no he was very good and um he 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 played the sort of game we've just come to really expect from him. And I think that in the two years or second year now of being a captain, we're just seeing those little bits of masterclass that he brings to it. The tackling's another element that, you know, I really hope can, you know, bring a few more players on board too. Like you see a bit of that with um, Caldwell and um, definitely with Setterfield. He's a bit of a tackling machine too. He certainly gets in there and gives it a go. Yeah. Um, the other one I wanted to make a bit more of a mention was um, again back to Draper. That first quarter, he's the way he rolls around the ground. He's a really important player for us. 
Um, really, you know, like it's an attitude thing a lot with him. Like it's, I'm up and about, I'm better than you. I'm going to take everyone on. And when that's working, it, it's just so good to watch. And you can see it brings players with him, you know, like, hmm. and I if do... you look at the real, sorry. No, that's right. Yeah. Well, if you look at the real positive too, he kicked a goal, Goldstein kicked a goal, and I really thought that that, and that allowed Peter Wright, I don't know if he'd had a different game if that incident hadn't have happened because he just looked different after that incident. He still well, he kicked still two. Kicked but, two. He still kicked two. kicked a lovely yeah. set shot again from outside 50. Set shots, yeah. But I really, I was really keen on how that worked for us because with Wright um, able to stay forward, I thought that helped with, you know, Draper mm. and Goldstein in the ruck and then they could also hang around. They, and they had an influence. They both kicked goals. So it's I, interesting I think that works. because we basically took out Jones for Draper, which is then yeah. essentially Jones for a combination of Goldstein or Draper as the forward. Yep. And we got two goals out of the ruckman. So yeah. that's plus two goals on what Jones was able to give us. And probably marks. I mean, I haven't looked at the numbers, but uh, Draper, four marks I know between to... them. Yeah. So that was th- that's three more than um, Jones. <laughs> who's a key forward and that's one of his skills life oh, skills that's, marketing it's the bare minimum um yeah. we did play vfl on saturday 37 point loss to oh did Brisbane. you see the footage uh i saw i saw Jaden david kick a goal that was very exciting did you see the, yeah when he ran away from Just everyone absolute fiend super quick. i saw somebody had cut it with the froggy his dad running away <laughs> from um <laughs> <laughs> that's that's nice. Sorry, my point. Um, bit of news I picked up too in the last sort of few hours was that, um, and I don't know how much of an issue this is, but uh, McGraw was seen in a moon boot today. Oh uh, one last thing, I was checking the VFL to see if Harry Jones played, which he did not. So that was my point of bringing oh, up the VFL, which interesting. is interesting. Yep. Why would the, what do you reckon would have happened there? Not sure. Might have. Pulled up saw. We didn't want to Would they have him. taken him back up to Sydney? Because was, where was that game played? It was played at the outground, it was, wasn't uh, it? The hangar. Yeah, yeah. He yeah, might yeah. have been an emergency. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, because um, Kelly obviously been laid out. Or oh, I don't know how late of an out he was, but he was out. That made my night. Oh, it um, did too for me. Not great on Pidge, if that's the case. However, Redmond and Kelly then theoretically are able to come back in, so we do at least have coverage. What I'm mm. more worried about is coverage for Peter Wright, but we'll get to that when we talk about next week. Um, yep. Briefly mentioned Will Setterfield. I mentioned him off the top. Um, yep. 20, 29 touches, eight clearances, seven tackles. Again, the tackles is just what we come to expect from Setters. He does it every the week. Big the clearances around the ground seem to be where we're getting that sort of improvement, which is great. Yep. I don't, I'm not a big fan of him delivering the ball inside 50, which he did seven times, a team high. But I'm okay with but, him. Yeah. Everything else, Schmicko, yeah. that's what we want to do to the man. If he's getting the footy and he, that's what he has to do, then that's just what he has to do. Yeah. Agreed. What are your thoughts on uh, the Nick Martin role two weeks in? Uh, both weeks, he has had good numbers. I don't deny yep. that. But I'm not doubting I the numbers. do not want him there ever again. He, he has no impact. I don't think he had any. I, I would agree he hasn't had an impact in the two games he's played so far, and I still wonder what the purpose is. And I swear Heppel seems to get them all kick the ball more out of defence than he does still. Yeah, and Heppel would have had Heppel had twenty one possessions. How many kicks in that twenty one possessions do you off I the can, top of your I head? I can tell well, I can tell. Tyson Heppel, twenty one, thirteen kicks. Thirteen kicks, yeah. What I want to say like, he, I was somebody was having a go at Dyson Heppel, you should get me out of the team. So like, oh, but he went at like ninety or eighty four yeah, percent, you know, by Every like, kick above forty meters is considered effective. That's how it yep, works. Yep. But it's not um, like taking the world on. I'm just going to re- rebound 50 stats. So McGrath, nine, Martin, six, Heppel, five. I mean, for six kicks out of the defensive 50, are we really getting value for taking a guy as classy as him out of the middle of the ground? Nah, that's rhetorical. Don't answer it. What? Well, okay, I will. Um, I guess the the positive, so the positive and negative is that Dersma I thought was okay, like better. yep, yep. Um, but Sardis wasn't. Yeah, Sardis was a bit quiet. Yeah, and so, um, I still I'm still fascinated by our positioning at the moment. I'll tell you another one that was a bit probably could have waited another week was Hobbs. He had flashes. 
I think he was only there because of Parrish being in and then not in. Yeah, fair enough. Because he just he just looked like he needed another week. To be honest, he sort of I would have liked to see him play a VFL game again. I think some people like some players maybe don't just get to get rushed back in. I think that you should play VFL just to see. Yeah, agree. Again, though, depending on circumstance, yeah. because we lost, we had Parish and then lost him again. So, yeah. as the teams were named on Thursday night, we got it one hundred percent correct. And from that yeah. point, it only went downhill. So, <laughs> well, we can't. We don't know what's actually going on with their bodies. No, we just guess, and this time yeah. we were right. But then they decided. Well, we, we weren't think. Right. <clears throat> I think we think of the most practical solutions. Shall we? Um, I don't know. We better do the uh, the. Uh, socials. Well, I want to, yeah, I want to talk about some some of the negative aspects of player. What negatives? Um, what I thought negatives, Ben Mackay was a bit meh. He was a bit, a bit eh. lost, a bit nowhere, and <laughs> I I can forgive him a little bit for sort of not. He's played with Zach Reed last week for half a game, then Nick Cox, and now he's had Jaden Laverto, who I thought was serviceable for what it's worth. Yep. But he just he wasn't in the contest. There are a couple of times, mm. maybe second and fourth quarters, where they got on a bit of a run. Where I went, where's Ben Mackay? Yeah. Where is he in the contest? He played, and I said this at the time, he plays like 100% game time every week, and he did play 100% game time. And I don't know where he is on the field. Where is, bro? I like him. I said last I week, I'm very happy. I just want someone to him. stay as a goalkeeper. I yeah. want a goalkeeper. Like a Stephen May stays at home. Doesn't like he's the anywhere. guy. The last moment, you go, oh, Stephen May will be there. It'll be fine. Mm-hmm. Nope. That's, that's the trust you build in your football club. You know how much trust Richmond supporters had in their team over that, like, 2017 to 2020 period? Lots. You know how much trust Collingwood supporters had in their team last year? Mm. Yeah. We comes, don't have it trust. It comes with being a good team. That's probably the but only... But this goes back to that that whole issue that like, continues to happen, that, that mackay has been there two weeks and he's already playing way too far up the ground. Well, he, like, was, good. he was okay last week. He, he but was in aerial contests. He was fourth and one. I think we got away and... with it. They they still had more inside fifties than us. And he took one mark. In this so, game, yeah, Mackay. Oh, that's shit ass. I mean, it's this goes great. down to our like what we're not getting out of him is this the the turnovers. So as uh, intercept marks, which yep. is what we were hoping we might pop up yep. a little bit higher in small sample size. Worst. Small yeah. sample size. Small sample size. But what is kind of funny is he had nine disposals, and only one kick, and he made ten meters gained. In the easiest position on the ground to have meters gained. Yeah, basically, you're only kicking the ball one direction. You can't really, really kick it backwards. Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> honorable mentions. You... Well, there's that's probably only negative. Honorable mentions. I thought Nick Cox had a really good first half in particular. He yep. looked at home. First time I've really hmm. seen him belong, quote unquote. I still think he's a player. We just got to give him games. Yep. Uh, he makes as... he makes weird little errors and does things. You go, what the? But, but yeah, time. That just... Yep. Learn your limits. Uh, Jaden Laverde put his body on the line twice, and that's yep. what I love about the man. I don't think he should be. I think he's depth, and that's perfectly fine. And he's in. The, I think we're too slow with him and Heppel yep. in that back six because, and if Kelly's in there too, it's ridiculously slow. slow because yep. there's no carry out of there. Yep, and that's why Martin becomes so important. But then Martin becomes such a hole for us because he's trying to do it all and run off the ground, yep. run up the ground, and then it just leaves us exposed. Yep. Um. Understand Laverde is in the side because of depth, but I thought he was yep. again serviceable and putting his body on the line, doing the things he had to do. And I had one more. Oh, uh, Stringer just recognised that he in fact kicked three goals again at seven for the season, which is quite good going for. What were we going to say? A negative about Stringer? The package that wasn't a negative. That was just honourable mention. Oh right, for just giving the mentions right. Yep. For the game generally, um, mm-hmm. seven goals in two games. That's very good going for Paco. Uh, and Archie Perkins followed up last week with 21, seven clearances and three tackles. So it's a reasonable game. Yeah, not as with not as heights. influential. And yeah, um, oh, I've got one more. Sorry. He's had 15. He's he's him and um, Setterfield are the two leading uh, centre clearance guys too. I think they've had 15 each for us. Yeah. Um, interesting. I know this probably jumps into a little bit ahead, but if Parish the Parish injury still very unclear what's going on. <laughs> I would really love them to come out yeah. and say either he's popped this calf or no, we just want to take another week. Like it's uh, Brad Scott. I heard him interviewed saying there was an eight second conversation where he just said he's not quite right, so we just didn't play him. I'm like, shouldn't we be doing a little bit more than that? Like him just 
Are we testing? Are we running? Are we stretching things? It's bizarre. Um, I'm sorry. I'm just going to go back. Jay Gresham. We need to just mention yes. again. 23 touches, three goals, 11 score involvements. Um, had a very good game as well. Yep. Now, I have to apologize. I, again, with the F1, kind of forgot to post any socials this weekend. So we don't have socials to talk about. That's on me. I just was rather distracted. Um, okay. It's disappointing, but I'll let it slide. It's fair enough. I uh, hope you can forgive me, listeners. Um, which also means I forgot about the pre-match one to get someone, someone to do the votes. So once again, we've got to ring in but next week, I promise. <laughs> Which leads me on to the votes and uh, after the somewhat controversial ones from yours truly last week, I feel like we're back on the same sort of path. So uh, I asked my good friend Jace to give me votes this week mm -hmm. in lieu of a listener. So he said Merritt three, Gresham two, Nick Cox one, which I can't really argue with. Nope. And me and you were fully agreed. So do you want to reel off our Votes. Which, again, we don't talk to these sort of stuff. We just sort of hand them over to each other and, and run them down. And, and we went, oh, that's yes, interesting. Proven, the same as proven by last week, clearly. Yep. <laughs> um, so both Sam and I had Merritt at three, Setterfield on two, and Gresham on one. And I, Gresham is quickly becoming our favourite new football player at the club. Yeah. Uh, I think Dersma's just plodding along doing some good stuff. Ben Mackay is still... I no, I'm on. I'm, I'm, I'm on his camp. In his camp, I just think. No, I'm still better. thinking he Should might have been better in a North Melbourne jumper. Still, let's not get too down on ourselves. It's round two. Well, I just not seen what like I'm, I don't understand a man that's that big, and that sort of I don't want to say useless, but he's just sort of he's big. Can you use some of that nuggetness, nuggetness, and mark, nuggetness. And mark the ball a little bit more? I like it. Anyway, we are agreed on votes this week. So um, you called me, can't remember what you called me last week, an idiot imbecile. Oh, names. Something. There were names. Phil commented too and totally agreed with you. So uh, I was disappointed. <laughs> Sorry, that was funny. So he's been, ban he's been banned from the Facebook page. <laughs> no, he hasn't. Um, yeah. Around the grounds. So we did this last week. I feel like there's a little bit more to talk about last week, but this... We could probably segue into next week off the back of this. So mm -hmm. I always kind of pay attention to the team we've just played. So Hawthorne got belted by Melbourne pretty badly, only kicking 38 points. Uh, five yes, they, they, eight. and they, yeah, they took a long time to score their few goals. They kind of stunk, and that makes me a little bit uncomfortable. Yep. Um, I think Melbourne the real deal. I, I really... The real I've, watched them the, I've watched them the first few weeks, and there's nothing wrong with what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Uh, Bulldogs had the big win over the Suns, which is their first loss under Hardwick, and I imagine takes a fair bit of pressure, at least for now, off of Luke Beveridge. Yeah. Yep. That perceived pressure that we put on him. Interesting in that, too. They dropped um, Loeb. Loeb yes, Loeb. who was actually very yep. good in the VFL. Did you see Jack McRae's numbers in yeah, the VFL? 47, yeah. <laughs> but they brought in um, Darcy. Uh, what's his name? Sam, Sam Darcy? Yes, yep. Yes, and he he played very well. Like you'd be hard pressed to say he goes out of thing. Kicked two goals, had something like fifteen or eighteen hitouts. You, you, I mean, I, Gold Coast didn't have a, a very good ruckman in, but you'd be hard pressed to say you dropped that. So mm -hmm. I'd imagine Lobby's playing back there again next week. That's all right. Might do something. Uh, Port Adelaide beat Richmond in Travis Bokes three fiftieth. That was again Richmond hung around but weren't able to. Mm -hmm. Sort of go with them for the full four quarters. Yep. Uh, other flag favourites, I guess, GWS, pretty com comprehensive win against the Eagles. Lovely passage mm -hmm. of play from Harley Reid. About the only thing he did. Well, yeah. It's funny, the, the mood towards Harley Reid compared to someone like Jack Watts all those years ago. Seems to be just a lot of love for Harley Reid and just... A generic, a general sort of hope that he goes I okay. And... I don't think that the, the opposition, the opposition players, all seem to hate him. I can see it when he's playing. They rag, tag, bump, cr crunch, get any bump on him, and he seems. I don't, he's mouthy. He's very yeah, mouthy for a young kid. No, that's fine. That. But um, he gave a don't argue. But it, realistically, he didn't have a lot of footy. No, I mean, he's it was playing lovely... in the worst midfield in the worst team. It was a really great passage of play. 
that one which I'm sure you've yep. all seen. He got yep. dumped after it. By the Ruckman. <laughs> but from a supporter's point of view, he doesn't doesn't seem to be a lot of animosity towards him, which again, if you compare it to Jack Watts, it's just it's strange. But anyway. Um North Can I finish off with oh sorry. I was just gonna say North were ahead of Fremantle for a long time but got overrun. Adelaide, I'm not sure about Adelaide anymore. Beaten by the No, they I think the, the the bubble has burst yeah. there. What's fascinating I think about Adelaide when you watch them from the outside is that you just look at it and go, Laird and um Crouch cannot play in that midfield together. They are both too similar speed, too slow, too sort of very you know, in and under sort of players. And then all the work has to be done by Dawson. So, and they they got Rochelle and the other one. I can't think his name starts with that as well. Starts with that. Right. Yeah, they should be throwing them in there much more often, but they're not. And hmm. and I just a couple of times Taylor Walker cracking the shits, um, yeah. kicking yeah. the ball out on the full at one point. I think just yeah, the wheels are. I mean, again, round two, it's hard to be too. Round two, but the top, I've but... lost to Geelong at home. Like, I know Geelong aren't a bad side, but they they would have had them level pegging. They wouldn't be wanting to lose games like that at home when they're no. trying to push into the eight. And as we've said no, already right. this year, there are so many teams that can finish in that bottom half of the eight that when you're Adelaide or Frio or mm. uh, any of the other interstate yeah. teams that might be on the fringe, you've got to be winning yep. that. And they, they go to Frio next week to play them, so... That'll be interesting. They're back against a team that they would have themselves, you know, fairly level pegging, level. but they're playing at their home ground now. And they're playing good footy for you. Mm. Yeah, Luke Jackson had a blinder. Oh, didn't he? Um, finally, there was Collingwood and St Kilda, which, as I mentioned earlier, I was in the city for that because of the F1. So if anyone else went to the F1, I don't know. It's my first time. It was hot and it was weird. Weird. Why was it weird? Um, I'm not. I'm not hugely into car Ferrari racing. Red. I'm not into hugely into car racing. Um, but you are. But I like you talk F1s. about it. And watch like, it all the time. I like the F1 specifically more so than just the the car racing. So, okay, I've never been before, and found it strange the lack of sort of seating for the ground. Not seating, but spots to watch reasonable track. Mm-hmm. Sort of as the ground, the, the the park pass they call it. Um. They're quick. They're unreal, those cars. But yes, they. We ended up watching the race on the big screen because that's the only place you could really get a. So you just watched it on a big telly. The timing you, and the pit stops. You might as well just go into a pub nearby and watch it in the pub and on a big telly. I, I, I watched it from, it's probably like a 10 meter space across. Behind me was the track, in front of me was the screen. So you had like the, the proper sound and the vibration of these F1 cars roaring past you. Mm. But without the screen, yeah, really no concept of what's going on. Um, mm-hmm. Local boy finished P4. That was nice. Yep, did watch that. Nice little stack at the end. Yeah, every single race that Carlos Sainz has won, uh, George Russell's crashed in. That's an amazing statistic. Bit of Maybe they might. Sure, yeah, I've got you this time, buddy. Uh, look, honestly, it was nice to see... Um, Verstappen DNF because it just made it more interesting, but then mm. Signs just was never really challenged, so it was kind of boring anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, wasn't sure about the cheers from the crowd as as Verstappen's fucking car caught on fire, but anyway, a bit much if you ask me. Anyway, no, that's enough F one shit. Yeah, sorry. Some people might be into it. Yeah, it's not what they're here for. Though, Sam. It's not called the F one pod. Um, the last thing about around the grounds I'm going to mention too is that Collingwood play Brisbane in, on Thursday <laughs> night. The shit off. <laughs> One of them, if Collingwood lose, which I'd, I'd nearly have them losing because it's up Brisbane. It's a big, big win up there if they can win up Brisbane. They will be zipping four, and I don't think you come back from that, do you? Not to a premiership sort of position. It's, it'd be a massive win. And the, the other thing too is oldest list in the AFL, so a lot of work to be done. It's interesting that that's the game this week. Brisbane are going to be in their own heads because they've had leads in both games and lost yeah. them both times. And good leads. Uh, yeah, match-winning lead, particularly against Carlton. That was 46 oh. points, something astronomical. Um, St Kilda, though, that's the opposition for us in round three. Yeah. They, I mean, it was a combination of 
Collingwood back six just made mistakes, just straight up yeah. mistake ridden. You know, good players just fucking up, and couple that with really good pressure from St Kilda, particularly in their forward line. I believe Max King's going to the tribunal tomorrow night. So if yep. they did happen to be without him, I wouldn't be upset. Would be fair. We uh, won't have Peter. Well, we won't have right. Yep. Um, what was really evident, I was sitting behind the goals level three, so I had a really mm -hmm. decent view straight down the ground. Their run and spread oh. when they've got the ball in hand is yep. very Phenomenal. good. Very good. Um, and this is, I think this is the game. And Their defensive mindset is brilliant. Yeah. Their team defense yeah. is unreal. And then when they've got the ball, they run yep. hard. And they spread and they create space. They but create the, opportunity. But they're barely ever out of position when they turn it over. Correct. Um, we're going to have to have, it's, what do they call it, blue collar? Where you just work hard? Mm. Or is that what? No, it's blue collar. Yeah, that, well, that's blue collar. Yeah. We just work hard <clears throat> to stay with mm -hmm. them. We're going to have to, especially on a quick deck at Marvel. Um, well, see, so this is, I think Marvel might help us. Because I think we play, I think our style of football, we want to we want to run and gun a little bit. Because, for example, Nick Martin, I think will have his best game at halfback on the weekend. Yes, that's a reasonable Be thing to say. Because I think that Marvel suits that what we're trying to do with him. Um, the disappointing is Peter Wright because I think he could have kicked a few against them. Uh, how we cover that, I don't know. I don't know if it's caddy. I don't think you can bring... If Jones didn't play on the VFL, then you can't bring him in. Like, you can't go horrible game round one, dropped, I think didn't play, with the bring Ruckman, him back. With two Ruckman playing, it's a good mm -hmm. opportunity to play Caddy. He kicked two in the VFL. And that was all yep. first half. We got beaten pretty badly by Brisbane, yep. so... But you can shuff, shuffle it around so Langford becomes a bit more the focal target or Stringer. You can go down that way. Send Stringer deeper. Send... Caddy up to a high half forward roll as a marking option and just say, just trying to get up the ground and mark the ball, mate. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And then leave, um, you know, Draper and or, or Goldstein deep at different times. And then, you know, um, Langford and, and Stringer play that middle sort of forward role. This is where Langford's so, <laughs> so valuable, critical, valuable. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, we talked about it last week with Hawthorne, he kicked the three goals in the second half and basically mm. won us the game. This week he kicked the two. I believe both were first half, but yep. one was a snap after the touch to play on, which, by the way, oh, can I, just say, I have never seen Sydney, uh, a team, touch the ball, like touch play on as much as they did off our kicks. It was unreal. Yes, mm. the out of bounds. How about the out of bounds? Hilarious, which I've that was so far out. Yeah, I was so hoping we'd win by a goal and they could just have that as their... Well, there's your stupid climbing the pole moment, the, the goalpost yeah. revenge. Oh, we've, got, we've had so many moments against them over the years. Yep. Um, mm. And then that big bomb snap from 45 was... Yeah, well, that delightful. was a beautiful kick too. Yeah. Um, so I think forward-wise, if we can keep those percentages up, you know, like the amount of goals we're kicking from the inside 50s, mm. then we're a shot to be in it. Because the knock I would have on St Kilda is their ability to score big scores. Yes, which is a very They nice have line. not yet. I wouldn't have, again, not looking at the data, just from the games I've watched, because that's what I go by, instinct, people, instinct. You know, eye test, I think they call that one. Yeah, that's called the eye test. I do it all the time, the eye and test. And if you, if you waffle enough, I can fact check while you yep. do it. So. so I don't think they're, they're big scorers. Like the first game against Geelong, that game was like eight goals they to nine. They scored 68 points against Geelong, yeah. yep. and they scored 94 against Collingwood. Yeah, so haven't, we've scored two scores of 100. And they've had two scores below 100. So now I don't, that's not, that's not game over, job's done. But that means that we do have the ability to score pretty well. It's the defending that we're struggling with. And I'd like to think that, I think we'll be in it, is what I'm sort of saying, is it? And it could come down to that last quarter. What will kill us, I reckon, is their ability to run. And mm. I think the fitness will. One, we just don't look fit is another issue that we I, I see with our clubs. And I think that they'll just run over the top of us. That's why I think a caddy would be good because he's a bit more of an athlete than, I'm not saying Jones is not an athlete, but caddy from everything I've read is 
one of his strengths is his ability to get you know up and down the ground for a guy who's 193, 94. So I would also consider, seriously consider um like someone maybe I don't know who, but maybe out of the VFL I heard that um that um Rogers or the other one played is it Rogers? Oh, Archie maybe? Roberts. Yeah. Yeah, Roberts, sorry. I'd be considering someone like that, not f- necessary for Heppel, but someone in the back six that can run because we're going to need a run up and we're going to just need a bit more leg speed and leg power, like, you know, power running. Well, guaranteed in is Redmond. Definitely, yes. Redmond in four. Right, we're going to say right's out. Who's Redmond in for? Hang on. Oh, we're going to, okay, right. Well, how about we do it more... How yeah, no, we position for position, but I'm just working through it so we don't forget because we look like yep. idiots, which yeah. more so than usual. Well, I think if Redmond comes in, then does Hine go out? Yes, I'm happy with that. Yep. I'm also going to say Davy Jr. Right goes, goes out. out, then then I think Caddy comes in for me. Yep, and we'll be saying Parrish. Given he was Parrish close right last here. week. He comes in for Hobbs. What about Davey Jr.? I don't think he's sticking around. I think he was only there because we needed a sub. Yes. See, I, yeah, you're right, and I think that's the way. But see, he's the guy, and or his brother. I'm just thinking. I want to see leg speed in this game because, see, strangely enough, you know who would be great in this game is Guelphie, who goes to play on Nasir Wanganee because he mm. Nasir Wanganee will have 35 touches yes. on us. He will run up and down the ground. Him and Hill will just. Plot along mm. and have 30 touches each, doing as they will with no one chasing them. Because they'll probably set up Nasir Wanganin to play on Stringer, and Stringer won't chase him. But Stringer might get away with three or four goals to make it even. But Wanganin Malira, sorry, Wanganin Malira will... Um, go back the other way. Yeah, go back the other way and probably set up five. The other one to consider is Kelly, who's only uh, out with illness. Um, and that means we're going to go back to having Apple, yeah, Kelly, Laverde, and what we do not want. The slowest back six. We're of the assumption that um, Ridley is... Still weeks away, I reckon. A couple of he's weeks. He's got a... Yeah, he's, oh, you would, again, I would play a VFL game. I know he's a very, very good player, but can we play a VFL game for him just to see if he doesn't break in a game? He won't play VFL. Uh, he was one to two last week, so he's a... Chance he's two to three. Still. Yeah, so you're so you're so. Yeah, I'm, I'm realistic. I'm, I'm saying that if Harish, who was fine for round one, still hasn't played and probably won't play this week, then yeah. I don't think you, who actually uh, injured himself, is going to be up. Oh, uh, I, 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 we're not going to get it right this week because mm-hmm. there's too many players. I don't, I don't know too how many variables. We don't know if Harish going to come in. We don't know if Kelly's going to come in. Redmond will come in. I don't think Redmond coming. David Junior plays. And definitely right goes out. So I there, can, I can see Hobbs going out in that world. You've, you've, you're right. But yeah, I don't know. I haven't given it much thought this week, to be honest with you. Well, I tell you what's working for us at the moment. And again, we'll go back to that. What is working? Clearances and center clearances are working. So if you can throw a parish in there over a over a Hobbs, then that gives us a bit more because you know steel. Crouch, although Crouch has been out for them for a couple of weeks. Uh, Windhag has been very good for them. Was very good, I thought, last week against Collingwood. And um, Steele, a very handy player. So No, who was good for them? The who... other one is Marshall. So our two mm. Ruckman against Marshall should be a good matchup because their backup Ruckman is um, um, Owies, I believe. Owies? Owens. Who's like a, Owens, sorry. Who's a 193 or 4 something. Two things. One, yeah. Mitch Owens. Mm-hmm. Good. Mitch Owen. Oh, he's very good he's footballer. One... I can't believe yeah, but... he's a backup ruck for them. I'll give you Oh, that. no, but he's 194. Surely when there's a ball up and Draper looks at that and goes, yep, I got him. No, but around the ground, he was phenomenal. Yeah, around the ground is going to be a challenge, but. Two. But Jack... we win clearances. This is my point. Two. Jack Higgins. Oh, yeah, Jack Higgins. Kicked are trouble. four <laughs> against Collingwood. One of them, he might have been the first man at the MCU to kick a goal from the food stands, but. Get Brilliant that goal, too, yep. nonetheless. Yep. Um, I could argue that one was in with the camera. Do angles. you know what's happening again? What's that? Small forwards are killing us. So the first week, Ginevan kicked three, didn't he? Two Papley's three, kicked yeah. four. Mm. Mm. You're right. Jack Higgins will kick three or four against us. And remember, we went and got Kelly for this whole job. 
and he never did it. Yep. I just don't get us. I just sometimes like we. It's the same. What's that that analogy about the mouse Ground that keeps touching? Is that what? No, no. The mouse <laughs> that keeps touching the the electricity and keeps getting you know electrocuting. Yeah. Can't work out why. You know, no. You keep doing the same thing. It was in the Simpsons. It Probably Lisa, Lisa did it at Bart. Uh, I do remember that actually. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they they do have a history of telling the future Simpsons. Maybe that's what they were. Yeah, they do. Yep. A uh, bit early for the Doomsday scenario, though. I will say. I think I think St Kilda win. I think they're far more polished, and mm. we're not going to get away with that level of converting our inside fifties into scores. I think that's going to be an issue. Yep. And I think they just work too hard. Mm. For what I we're able to keep up with at the moment. That's my biggest I think it's that concern. hard work that's going to be the real... That'll, so that'll get over the line. Give me the little dopamine hit of bringing Caddy in and I'm okay. I want to see him yep. play AFL. Great. Okay, that he's only played one VFL game. Other than that, I mean, hopefully Pidge isn't injured. I would like to see Parrish back because in a midfield that's already functioning very well, that's a very good addition. Yep. Um... Other than that, I don't really care. I didn't like Hines' game. I thought he was hind like was, just just brain farts constantly. Just, again, if he was on if he was on Papley, then that has not worked. No. He's not a lockdown defender. Which you would defender. think is the matchup. Never has. You think that he's got the pace to go with Papley, so that would be the matchup. Yeah. Uh can I have a tip, please, to finish on? Uh Bombers by two goals. <laughs> Did this every time. Um look. Realistically, St Kilda by maybe 26. Okay. I said Sydney by 27 last week. I don't know. I've just got to, you did. I need to break away from this 20-something. St Kilda by 18. There you go. I think they're, they're, they're better than us. They are in a, they should be better than us. And, again, I'm mm. going to be just interested to see how we play against a better opposition. And mm. I think Marvel will be the, the thing that will help us stay in the game personally. We've got three or four of our first choice guys out. Oh, that hurts me. We've got a few this early in the year. No injuries. Well, I'm already thinking about him. Anzac Day. Well, that that's that's the one I'm looking at now. And what kick them while they're down. And by Please that get point, it right. by that point, they may well be back up. But just yeah, uh, that's a stupid thing to say in round three. But do you know? Two. Um. Uh, someone, I, I think that what I think that we are really um, missing is um, uh, Kane Baldwin. Yeah, it'd be nice for the backup at the yeah. moment, wouldn't he? Twelve weeks off, unfortunately. Yeah, I think if he would have come in. I mean, I hope he would have got picked in front of Laverde, and I think he's mm. kicking. You know, and the way he, have. yeah, we, we know for well. But his kicking is what we're lacking. Like that, if somebody like. Laverde doesn't take those kicks on. Heppel, I don't this think. This is my point. Those... That's yeah. Nick Martin's job now. And we're yeah, not doing it enough. One guy but doing we're not it. doing it make... enough. It doesn't. It doesn't, yeah, that doesn't well make sense to me. me. One guy, that's your only job. But yeah. Just kick it out. Everyone else give it to Nick. But what are we here for? Can... To defend. But we yeah. can't. We're yeah. not very good at no, defending. No, I'm with you. <laughs> Can I finish on a little, just one very short, brief uh, yeah. story? I was sitting at the MCG Thursday night waiting and this lovely, lovely, lovely couple who would have been in their mid-60s or so, maybe a bit younger, from England or from, yeah, they lived in England, sat next to me. And he said something that made me laugh and I started chatting to them and I only realised how fucked up our game is Mm. when I was trying to explain explain the rules rules to two foreigners. Mm. Holy shit. so he threw the ball up. Why did the, what happened to the Ruckman? Well, Not even one that. sort of protected the block in the area where the ball's coming down. So that's called a block. But in some worlds, that's just good ruck work because you're actually clear. But you can, in a marking contest, you're allowed yeah. to do that. You know, oh, yeah, it's just fucking stupid. We, we know the ruck lottery. That's actually simple oh. to explain. But even the scoring, like, you yeah, the big sticks, but if you hit the post, but if you hit the smaller post, it's a free kick. But, but if you kick it out in the full, that's it. So that's if it hits the post, it's out in the full. But you can run it over from a certain distance. Uh, but if you too, but if you're a certain distance out, and no one's putting pressure on you. You can't run it over the point post because no, that's bad. Yeah. Um, <laughs> look, yeah, it's stupid. I honestly, I, I agree lost, with that. I lost interest in explaining it to them, and we ended up chatting about all sorts of different things. They were big rugby fans, so we had a bit of a chat about that, even though that's mm-hmm. over my head. Um, 
But it was really, it was really good. Faith in humanity yeah. restored. They're really nice people. So well, good, good Sam. But yeah, don't explain the rules of AFL to anyone. Well, I can imagine how challenging it would be. Painful. All right, let's wrap this puppy up. On that bombshell, that is the end. Uh, right on an hour. How good. Um, we're still, I think we're still none the wiser to where this football club is at. Just no, yet. but we're seeing consistency, which is worrying. We're, but, we're pessimistic. Um, yeah. All right, that'll do us. Uh, we'll be back next week, possibly a little bit later with the Easter long weekend after the St Kilda game. Thank you yep. for tuning in. We appreciate you and go Dons. Go Mamas.